What's up, everyone, and welcome back to Movie Race. From different hair colors to some major age differences, here's what the cast of Narnia should have looked like if the creators stayed loyal to CW's Lewis novel descriptions. Lucy Bavensi, Georgie Henley For those of you who aren't familiar, Netflix has acquired the rights to the entire Narnia franchise. Rumor has it that Netflix has already started the production of a reboot of the series, meaning that the franchise will not continue right after Disney stopped. Disney intended to adapt the silver chair, but the continuation didn't happen simply because the films were less and less profitable. Now Netflix intends to start with The Magician's Nephew, the prequel to The Chronicles of Narnia. Since this is a reboot, Netflix will need to hire a new group of actors. Let's go through Lewis's description of the characters and check out some of the suitable actors that will hopefully do justice to the franchise. Lucy Pavensi was one of the most endearing characters in the books and the film film adaptation. She is one of the four Pavensi siblings. She has never stopped believing in Narnia, and when you compare her personality in the film to the one in the novel, there is not much difference. But her physical appearance is not really what Lewis had in mind when he was writing the books. In the novel, Lewis writes, As for Lucy, she was always gay and golden-haired, a fair-haired lady with a very merry face. In the film adaptation, Lucy was portrayed by Georgie Henley. Henley's hair is not as golden as the writer described. In the first book, the writer makes several mentions that her hair was as golden as ever, and she was so beautiful that many princes desired to be their queen. Who do you think would fit this description for the Netflix reboot of the book series? Edmund Pavensky, Skander Kinis Edmund's physical appearance is not much described in the novels, but we do know that he has ash blonde hair and gray eyes. With this information, the creators had complete freedom of how to present the character. The BBC adaptation of the novels depicted him with straight blonde hair and slightly rooty skin. The Disney adaptation depicts him with dark brown hair, brown eyes, and freckles. We believe Disney did a good job casting the English actor Skander Kinis in the three films. One of the biggest differences made in the film is Edmund's personality. In the books, he's not so cold. Any suggestion for who Netflix should cast in the role of Edmund? Peter Pavensi, William Mosley. Peter was played by the English actor William Mosley in the three Disney films. The amazingly talented actor made this role much more lovable, and we can honestly say we can't imagine someone else other than William portraying the character of Peter. In the novels, Peter doesn't get much of a description when younger, but once he grows up, Lewis describes him as a tall and deep-chested man with a great warrior. The novel also presents him with dark hair while William's hair is blonde. Perhaps Cole Sprouse could play the older version of the character in the reboot. What do you think? Susan Pavensi, Anna Popplewell In Disney's live-action films, Susan is played by actress Anna Popplewell. Sophie Winkleman plays the older version of the character by the end of the first film. Lewis describes the character as a tall and gracious woman with black hair that fell almost to her feet, and the kings of the country beyond the sea began to send ambassadors asking for her hand in marriage, and she was called Susan the Gentle. Honestly, Disney did a good job casting Anna for this role at least according to us. Don't you agree? Mr. Tunis, James McAvoy. Tunis is a fawn, meaning that he had the legs of a goat, and according to the writer, his legs were covered with black hair. He had a tail and was a bit taller than Lucy. He was only a little taller than Lucy herself, and he carried over his head an umbrella, white with snow, Lewis describes. He then explains how Mr. Tunis had a red woolen muffler around his neck, and his skin was rather reddish too. He had a straight strange but pleasant little face with a short pointed beard and curly hair. And out of the hair, there stuck two horns, one on each side of his forehead. We hope Netflix stays loyal to this description and makes the character exactly the same as in the novels and the Disney adaptation. If the streaming giant adds anything to his appearance, it would be pointless and a lot of fans will be disappointed. Don't you think so? Aslan, Liam Neeson. Well, not much to compare here since 
since Disney used the perfect CGI for this character. Aslan is the one true king of the world of Narnia. Interestingly enough, Lewis didn't plan to include this character in the novels until a lion appeared to him in a dream one night. Aslan is described as a large and terrifying creature, but he's also glorious and an intelligent lion. We don't think there's a way Netflix could have made a mistake with this character, unless, well, unless they present Aslan as a tiger. Before we continue, make sure you smash that like button if you haven't done it already. Prince Caspian, Ben Barnes Lewis imagined Prince Caspian as golden-haired in his youth. When he grew old, he had a long, gray beard. But there's no specific description for Caspian other than the one of his golden hair. In fact, Lewis tried to give less descriptions of the characters because he wanted kids who read his novels to use their imagination more. Anyways, in The Voyage of the Dawn Treader, Lewis mentions a couple of times that Caspian was a golden-haired boy. In the Disney adaptation, Ben Barnes plays a character, and his hair is obviously not golden. This is, however, nothing compared to the huge age difference. In the Prince Caspian novel, Caspian is about 13. When Ben got cast in Narnia, he was 27. Casting 30-year-old actors for teenager roles was an ongoing trend in Hollywood, which is thankfully fading away. And Netflix tends to cast teenagers for characters that are supposed to be played by younger actors. Do you have any suggestions for the role of Prince Caspian? Let us know. Trumpkin, Peter Dinklage Lewis put a simple description into his character as according to his imagination. Trumpkin was a red dwarf. Peter Dinklage portrayed the red dwarf Trumpkin in the Disney adaptation. According to most fans, the biggest problem with Peter was that he wasn't as red as he was supposed to be. Trumpkin is also described as having an immense beard and whiskers, of course red hair, something like a fox's. But Dinklage's hair is blonde in the film. The actor's eyes are green, while Lewis imagines the character with twinkling black eyes. Thankfully, Disney included the beak-like nose, though. Euston Scrub Will Poulter Euston's Clarence Scrub was first introduced in The Voyage of the Dawn Treader. He's a cousin of the Pevensi siblings, and there isn't much of a description of him in the novels. Lewis introduces a character with this line. There was a boy called Euston's Clarence Scrub, and he almost deserved it. So who do you think would be the best fit for Eustons in the reboot. The White Witch Tilda Swinton The representation of evil, the White Witch, is one of the best castings Disney ever did. Tilda Swinton made this character what it is. She was perhaps the most fitting character for comparing them to the description in the novels. Disney tried to stay as loyal as possible to the source material, and we wish for Netflix to do the same. Lewis imagined the White Witch as a great lady taller than any other woman that Edmund had ever seen. She was also covered in white fur up to her throat and held a long long, straight, golden wand in her right hand and wore a golden crown on her head. Her face was white, not merely pale, but white like snow or paper or icing sugar, except for her very red mouth. It was a beautiful face in other respects, but proud and cold and stern. What is your dream team of actors that should portray these characters in the reboot? Do you wish for Netflix to follow the writer's description? Let us know down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed our video, make sure you subscribe to our channel so you'll never miss any of our videos in the future. As always, thanks for watching.